I'm going to go on a bit of a rant today, and it's about these help or definition pages that people put in their Power BI reports. I don't think you should have them in your reports if you're displaying your reports to the end user via a workspace app or an organizational app. And I do have an alternative. I'm not saying don't put in any documentation. But first, let's talk about why these are awful. There's two main reasons. First of all, I think it's kind of confusing to the end user to have these help pages under each report, especially if they're all named the same thing, like help or definitions. And yes, I know you can hide them, but then you're constantly dealing with hiding and rehiding tabs. The second reason has to do with the consistency of the information that's put in these tabs. If you saw when I was kind of clicking around on those reports, those are two reports that look wildly different. And yes, these the kind of things can be solved with a the theme, but if you don't have standard information that's put on every single help page, there's a good chance that that information and the layout of it will vary from report to report. And the tab that's meant to help people might just end up confusing them. So what's the alternative? Well, I'm about to jump right back into my computer and show you. But first, if you made it through that little rant, go ahead and subscribe and hit the like button because you clearly found me interesting enough to make it through a minute of me talking. All right, let's jump into our computer and let's talk about an alternative. And here that alternative is, instead of putting a help page under every single report, build a third report that you can call dictionary in this case, or help, and store all of the report metadata for all of your reports that are displayed in that app in that singular third dictionary or report help workspace. Not only that, you can also then do this super cool trick that I'm going to show you how to do a little later in this video. And that is when you click the help button from one report, it opens up a new tab that filters down the dictionary or the help page directly to information about that specific report page that you just clicked the help button from. This allows for you to customize the report itself to show only the KPIs that are specifically relevant to that page or more granular details about what that particular page in that particular report is meant to be used for. Now, I'm going to show you how the filter parameters that I'm using to do that filtering are working. But before I get there, let me talk about one other benefit of building out a report metadata semantic model for a custom front end, and that is consistency. In order to build out a data model that works for every single report, you have to maintain the same information for every single report. So by storing your metadata in a semantic model of its own and requiring that every single report get an entry in that semantic model, you've just standardized all of your report documentation. Okay, let's talk about how the dynamic filtering uh, between these reports is actually working. And the way it's working is it's using this really old Microsoft Power BI feature. You might be like, well, how do you know it's old? Well, you can tell by how old this screenshot is in the guide that I'm going to link down below in the video description. Simply put, we are passing parameters to the Power BI report via a URL. So when we're in the app here and we're clicking this button, we're just simply navigating to the dictionary report via URL and passing parameters. The syntax for doing this is pretty simple. You essentially have a question mark, then you go filter, then you put the table name, then you put the field value, the field value that you want to filter, and then you put the value that you want to filter it to. If you have spaces in your table or field names, you need to use the underscore x0020. And then you can chain filters together by simply using the word and. And I'll show you an example as to what that looks like in just a second. But first, I need to show you a problem with this method that I solve in this video. And that is when you're using this URL method, it doesn't clear pre-existing filters. So what does this look like? Well, here's that dictionary report, only I've filtered it down using this dropdown at the top. I'm then going to try to navigate to a different report via a URL. 
And what happens is when I put in that URL, it stacks the filters. So we don't get any results at all. And as you can see, I've applied a filter on page name and report name via the URL, but we don't get any results. So the solution for this is that you need to clear the filters via the URL before the filter parameters are applied also via the URL. So how does this work? Well, we use everyone on Reddit's favorite tool, bookmarks. You see, what I've gone ahead and done is build a bookmark into this definition page that is called clear. And when I navigate to this bookmark, it clears out all filters. And one of the ways that Microsoft Power BI navigates to a bookmark is via what's called a bookmark GUID. So if we go to this report and then we go to this bookmark, what you'll see is that it has a specific ID number that I just added to the URL with this bookmark. So we can stack these together to produce a URL that will first navigate to the bookmark and then apply filters. And this is what these URLs look like. As you can see right here, I have the standard URL navigating to the Power BI uh, report, the definition report that I built. Then I have some code that's navigating to the cleared filters bookmark. And then I have the parameters that I am passing to filter the report directly via the URL. So in this case, right, this would be a URL that I would use from sample report two for page store. So as you can see, I'm filtering the report dimension, column report name equals sample report two, and the page dimension, page name equals store. So if you're watching this and you now are convinced that you should remove all of the help pages out of your individual reports and instead just build a singular help report that you navigate to via fancy URLs, let's take a look as to what my theoretical help report semantic model looks like. And this is it. Now, I'm not going to sit here and tell you that this is the perfect model, but I'm going to walk you through it just so you have a good starting place as to how you want to build out a similar semantic model for your organization. First things first, I have the report dimension. Now in this report dimension, I have things like the report name, the report description, and then an ID, and then a last refresh, a start and end time. This report dimension then filters down a page dimension, which has a page ID, which is used to join to the report dimension. Um, and then that has the page name and the page description in it. Now this page dimension then filters down to essentially a bridge table between the page and the KPI dimension, which tells the semantic model, hey, what KPIs are on that page? And then finally you have a KPI dimension where you have all of your uh, KPI names and descriptions. By having a singular KPI dimension, you ensure that all of your KPI names are the same between all of your reports. Remember the whole point of this is consistency, so that's an advantage. But this is my really simple model and feel free to copy it and tweak it slightly for your own organization. So hopefully you're now convinced to stop putting help pages in your Power BI reports. If you aren't, let me know down in the comments.